Hello, my name is Michel Perron. I work for Unisys. As you can hear, I'm French. Uh, I've been in the UK for seven years. Uh, before that, I've been working for large companies in France, like uh, in Red Packard, uh, Romani Corporation. And uh, I've been dealing with uh, asset management and configuration management for a few years. I started, in fact, in uh, outsourcing services in HP uh, in 1993. Uh, I came to the world of configuration management in the UK. I've been working uh, for Fox IT uh, in 2005 and started to work for a large utility company in, uh, in the UK. And I continue to work with this company for a while, even when I go independently. After this, I joined Unisys. Unisys is an outsourcing company. That's like one characteristic is that we deal with large, large companies, international companies. One rule for Unisys is that the, the company must have more than five different countries. Most of the time, they have uh, over 50 countries. It's quite challenging in terms of configuration management, asset management, uh, as you will see. So today the, the purpose of the talk is to talk about accuracy. For me, if you want to construct a CMDB, you have to ask a couple of questions. One is, who is going to use the data? What data are you really interested in? Where is this data coming from? How many of this? So how many of people using the database? How many of what CI do you want exactly? in the database, and how many were as well. And this makes your why. We are not going to take every single data in the world to put in a CMD. There's no point in that. We need a justification. If we want to be accurate, we have to understand what we are actually measuring. And for this, the thing which is a, a bit unusual in my approach, is that I focus on the when. So not all data is available at the same time. Yes, question? Just a question about the why. Does that include the business purpose of the CFDB? Because you should achieve something for business. Absolutely. That's the, that, that's the point. Why are you doing this? Okay. Okay. So not for yourself. Not just to create a, a good accurate inventory of assets, but to make sure that the business operates more effectively. That's one way, yes. It really depends on who you talk to. And that's the, that's the thing. So, unfortunately, accuracy is not really something you can measure easily. It's subjective. As I say, it's in the eye of the person who observes the CMDB. Some will say, your CMDB is complete rubbish because they couldn't find the data they were looking for. Some others will say, oh, actually, I'm, I'm okay. I found everything I want in the CMDB. So it's always contextual to the person you are talking to. And it's also very emotional. As a big utility company in the UK, I could say that the emotion was very, very strong with regard to CMDB in a bad way. Whoever you are talking to, they are saying, ah, it's bad, it's bad, it's bad. And that's why I was brought in from in the first place. They wanted, in fact, to change the perception from bad to acceptable and then maybe to good. So it's critical for trust. If, if the people have the impression that the accuracy is bad, they will not trust the CMDB, they won't use it. They will develop their own stuff. They will start doing their own Excel file, access, and so, and so on. Okay, if you claim that the accuracy is good, then you, can, you must justify your claim. If it's good, that's probably because you have a best practice in place. So this best practice should be identified, praised, and continued, right? You, you need to keep the good thing. And also you need to know why it's bad. And if you can do something about it, you may know what to do about a certain situation, but you can't do anything. I take an example. For this, this company, for example, when we came to talk about the network information, Normal reaction, people were saying, network information must go to the CMDB. Right. Who is going to provide this information? Obviously, the network people. 
do the network people have a vested interest in the CMDB? Answer, no, they don't care, they don't give a damn. Most, even more, the network was outsourced to an external provider. Meaning, and then when I talk to these people, say, I don't care what is behind the, the plug in, in the wall. What I'm interested in is that if I plug something in the wall, it works. That's all I need to understand. So therefore, the decision was to say, don't put any network information in the CMD. But we put still something, because people were saying, yeah, but we need to understand what's talk to, uh, which box talk to another one. So we accepted to do one thing, is to create subnets. So we had CIs called subnets. What is composing a subnet? No idea. What we know is that there is an SLA of the subnet that is 100% available from Monday to Friday, from 7 a.m. to 23 p.m. That's what's interesting. That's the kind of information that we can control and we can measure. So responsibility should be made clear. That's the point. So if in this situation, the, the information is not managed by the customer, it's managed by a service provider. So therefore, we can't really do anything about it. And in this particular case, this company has 65,000 people over the UK. When we started this project in 2008, we started somewhere about 25% of accuracy. How did I measure that? I was just taking a sample of the content of the database and add some criteria so that I will explain a little bit later and just measuring how good they are. Right. And one CI out of four was okay. So it was not really good. And that's why people were really complaining. The other thing is that uh, they had only 45,000 CIs, no relationship almost, and they had 10 people looking after them every day. So people were saying, how do we pay 10 people for such CRAP, right? And that was the situation. So I applied the methodology that I, uh, that I would present just after, and we went from 25% to 80% in one year. So a huge improvement. And this was a perceived improvement. So the, the senior management was really concerned about all the people coming to them saying CMB is not usable. And after a year, the, the language changed. And people started to say, well, actually, I can use the CMB. We have useful information. So that's complete change. What you can notice is that after in 2013 now, after six years, we are still at 90, 96%, which is remarkable. We'll never reach 100%, impossible. We're always at cases where we can't control everything. But it's a huge, huge improvement. Richard, yes. in, in improving that accuracy, was it about tidying up the database as it existed at that time, and, but also looking at preventing it from getting a, a situation going forward? So was it a perfect case? Yeah, so the question is, do, did we reuse, in fact, uh, the, the CMDB and make it better, or...? Yeah, yeah, if, if uh, once you, once you tied up the database, um, was there measures in place to stop it from getting in that state? Yeah. Yes, so, yeah, so we look at, we see that now, but we look at the process. So if the process is bad, we stop doing it, and we change it, and we make sure that people follow the right process. And secondly, did we have the, first, the, the right information in the first place? Are we really interested by the content of the, of the CMDB at that time? Maybe not. Because we didn't do the analysis and say the why. Why are we, are we doing that? Have we any consumer of information? If we don't, why would we bother putting information in CMDB in the first place? It just annoyed people to say, yeah, there is tons of information, but it's not the one I want, it's not there. So, what the point? And as I would say, I don't care about CMB, it's not useful for me. So it's a, it's a mixture of everything. My situation at the moment, uh, I stopped working for this uh, this company, but now I'm, I'm dealing with uh, uh, 
uh, outsourcing projects for, as I said, for international companies. And the situation is that the customer may buy several kinds of services, all sorts of services. So this is an example for it. They may buy uh, service desk site support, they may buy <coughs> service desk, they may buy the cloud solutions, they may buy network and system management, they can all sorts of things. But in the center of everything, we have an ITSM solution. And this ITSM solution, to be complete, is a multi-tenant solution. So that, and as a challenge, that gives you an idea of how complex it can be. And so we have uh, millions of CI in the CMDB, and what we do for one customer should not affect the other customers. Or if that happens, it needs to be valid for everyone. So that's, that's the current situation.